Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. Three marketing do's and don'ts for coaches, consultants, and small business owners to maximize their profits on a bootstrap budget. Now, if you don't have a working marketing strategy, you're just as likely to feel stuck with the money as you would do without it. And a few key strategies will utterly make the difference. Now, let's get this straight. Growing your business is tough. Every single day, you're calling potential clients and you're having them hanging up on your face. And sometimes you're sending out hundreds of emails without even getting as much as a thanks for reaching out or you're wasting thousands of dollars on ad spend without even generating any qualified leads. And sometimes it may feel like no one wants to buy what you're selling. And when you really um, are trying out there and you rely on your business to actually pay your rent, look after your family and actually achieve your dreams, That could be a major strain. It could actually put an enormous strain on your emotions, on your relationships, and you actually start losing confidence in your own ability. And you're terrified of having to give up on your own dreams. And most of us as consultants and coaches would have started off as, um, you know, employed in a nine to five job. And then, you know, you actually start contemplating a return to a safe nine to five job with your tail tugged between your legs if you actually can't bring in clients. And especially if we look these days, it's so hard and it's so difficult because all the information that we need to start, scale and grow a business is actually available online. You know, as a coach or consultant, our job is being in the information business, you know, and as Um, you know, our industry entails, we actually have a lot of access to this information, ideas, tools, and other resources. And it's all at an all time high. And being unable to then make a dollar from all that information that we have accumulated along, you know, the journey is actually going to depress you more than anything else. You know, but let me tell you something. It's the ability to be decisive and apply what you learn as quickly as possible that is actually valuable. I kid you not, every single day, if you've been following our podcast, I actually put out so much content and half of the stuff that I put out, I'm like, wow, should I have actually told people this? Because people are paying for access to this information. You know, there's some parts of, um, you know, content and structure that I put or systems and strategies that even if I have it out there for free, I still charge people that come through to me and we implement it in their business. So it doesn't matter what you know, it's how you actually then implement this information. And when it comes to marketing, the mantra is you measure, you track and you improve. What doesn't get measured doesn't grow. And what you don't track, you won't know how to improve it. And if you keep this in mind, you will have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And among all the other payoffs, you actually avoid the trap of spending most of your time researching or otherwise consuming other people's content. You know, the gurus out there and questioning your every move as a result. And instead of attain, attaining the confidence that you actually need in order to grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I want you to actually achieve better results and I want you to really start living a life of your dreams. So you must be sitting there listening to this podcast and thinking, how can I then grow my business in order to compete with the big players? 
And I know the biggest problem as a coach, consultant, or entrepreneur, marketing is just one aspect of running a successful business. You know, you got to hire staff, you manage them, you balance the books, and then you actually drive the growth of your business and much more. And it actually feels like a constant balancing act, you know, when you're pulled in multiple different directions all at once. And at the end of the day, you went into business just so you could help your clients be, do, and have a better existence, you know? Or your real goal is just to help your clients. None of this uh, balancing books, none of this bass stuff that comes along with business, you know, none of this having to identify the target market, clarifying your message, all of that stuff, you know? You just want to spend as much time as possible just changing lives and offering those transformations which you signed up for and literally solving people's problems. You don't want to waste your time and countless hours each and every week trying to navigate all the complexities of an online marketing. But it is inevitable, you know, and you certainly don't want to spend yet another minute maybe on the phone with somebody who doesn't know what it is that um, they want and you having to convince them to hire your services. But fortunately, you don't have to, you know, especially the fact that you're listening to this podcast and you're doing something in order for you to be, do and have a happier existence and a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I commend you. And it's just um, a matter of time up until you would know the three things that I promised you that you shouldn't do or you should do in order to maximize um, the profitability of your business, even if you are bootstrapped. OK, and let me tell you what. I don't have to do all these crazy things every single day, um, you know, of waiting for, for people to understand what I'm saying because I'm constantly putting content out there. And you know what? I still have a long list of clients who want to work with me. And it's not because I'm a genius. It's because I just mastered a few step-by-step -step processes which have now made me um, acceptable and I've created assets that allow people to reach out to me and uh, beg to want to work with me and it's not because I'm a master of persuasion either you know I just follow these simple systems and I'm going to be laying out some of them uh, for you and you know I'm going to use references that might relate to you or something that might be might tweak your interest just pay attention and like we said you might have all the information in the world but if you don't implement or do anything or take any action towards it then it's all for note those that take action are the ones that are actually going to be benefiting and creating lifestyles and businesses that are profitable and enjoyable you know, I'm going to use reference of maybe alcohol here and um, out of love and respect, I'm just using an example that comes um, to mind as I speak here. You know, when you're in business, be the tequila, not the lime. What do I mean by this? Okay, picture yourself as a basker or somebody who is singing uh, you know, on the street. I mean, things are open now. People are going to be trying to put a hat out there and start singing. You know what comes to mind when I talk about a busker? You know, Mr. Bean was walking, um, I mean, towards uh, the train station and he noticed somebody was playing, a um, what do you call it, a trumpet. And he looked, he searched in his pocket and he couldn't find a coin. Now, Mr. Bean felt compelled to pay this guy, and obviously he didn't have money to pay at that moment. So what did Mr. Bean do? He took a handkerchief out of his pocket, and then he started performing uh, alongside this guy who was um, playing an instrument um, towards the train station. And guess what? When the first person threw a coin in Mr. Bean's handkerchief, he took that coin and then went on and um, placed it in the guy's hat. And he felt like he had done something, you know. And and, and there's a marketing uh, strategy in all that that Mr. Bean did in his comedy without him actually realizing. So you as a coach, consultant, and um, you know, um, entrepreneur, you are a basker in the internet realm. You have your song, you have your instrument that you are playing, um, you know, on the street there and people are on their way to go somewhere. Because when people are on the internet, they are just 
a hive of activity. They don't know where they're headed to. And they just pass by your pages, your content, or the stuff that you're putting out there. And your song then becomes your message. And guess what? You don't, a busker doesn't chase people to come and listen to him. What does a busker do? They stand still in one place. And soon enough, one person stops to watch. In the instance of the person who we gave as an example, Mr. Bean stopped to watch, but he didn't have a coin. So he then created his own entertainment and people started formulating um, a crowd around them. Okay, so your song or your message, you have to stand in one particular place so that people get to know, like, and trust who you are. You don't chase people down the road so that they can come and listen to you while you are performing, um, you know, your street theater or your street art. You stand still. And soon, a person like Mr. Bean stops to watch. And more people see this and then they join. And in minutes, you now have a crowd. Now, this is what audience building is. And you do it by creating a strong message and a winning offer and standing in one single spot so people can easily find you. Now, it's very rare that any uh, platform these days won't let you have a collection of people or ideal clients in it. Now, the next step is to decide what that platform or platforms are and consistently share your message and commit to the process. Because your role as an entrepreneur is to identify your target audience. And then when you clarify your message, you determine what media you're going to be using to send that message to that audience. And you want to do it consistently. So like I said, be the tequila and not the lime. Create that winning formula, create that message and stand, you know, so that people can find you if they go out wondering. All right. A lot of us are eating, you know, like uh, wondering generalities and we are just doing something enough. And if we don't see a good crowd forming around what we are doing or saying, we move on to the next message. People need about seven instances minimum for them to actually start to stop and then uh, see what it is that you're doing. And also half of the time when people join in, welcome them, let them know that the show has already started. Let them just join the rest um, of the people and make sure you've got a crowd around you because people like us do things like this. Have you ever noticed when you're walking, um, you know, in the city and you just see a line forming, you question what the line is all about because people want other, uh, what other people want. So make sure that crowd is form forming around your content, your message, and make sure that that message is clear enough for people to stop and actually understand what it is that you're saying. Now, in light of singing and, um, you know, uh, maintaining an audience, be the voice and not the echo. All right. So when you choose a product, um, you know, or a service, you want to choose to be a product of your idea and be the achievement of your strategies. Okay. Whatever you achieve or whatever you, your results are, should be based on what it is that you're telling other people to be, do, and have. You know, there was um, Henry Ford, when he did uh, his Model T, he built a revolutionary car. You see, the one thing is he never then took a horse to town. He was driving his Model T everywhere that he was going. So be a product of your idea and your own achievements. All right. So maybe you sell a software or maybe you sell a process, uh, a coaching process, and you you should be using that process within your business and within your teams because people want to see the live example of what you're preaching or what you're teaching so that they can actually make sense of what it is that you're trying to tell them. You know, giving the example of Henry Ford, if Henry Ford would have not used you know, his own car and use maybe a Chevrolet or somebody else's brand. Do you think people were going to trust his um, ideas? Look at Elon Musk. He drives a Tesla wherever he goes because he's proud and he's confident that whatever he's putting out there is working. Can you imagine if Steve Jobs was using, um, a, 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 you know, a, an Android phone? 
You know, what would people think of the iPhone uh, platform? Okay? It would make no sense. You know, or maybe if Steve Jobs would go and leave off the grid with a rotary phone or one of those uh, phones that are attached to the wall. So when you market something, you should use it. Okay? Say you're selling software. You know, or perhaps you actually do or you're a computer technician or something like that. What kind of te computer technician has a bad web, um, you know, website or bad computers. You know, I, I, I laugh and chuckle at um, maybe copywriters or web developers who say, oh, I don't have time to do my own website because I'm busy with client work. Hey, the proof is in the pudding. If people, if you can't manage your own uh, website, what makes you think I can believe you'll be able to, 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 to look after mine? So be the best example of the software or the websites in action. You know, and be your most successful case study. Gather metrics from your own business and any other software users or website users that you've made websites for and prove that the thing works. Show people why it's exceptional. Don't just tell them. Show them. Okay? Because marketing and selling on a small budget is easier when you are remarkable. And of course, when people want what you have, they will tell people about it because people like us do things like this. And this makes you desirable. And desire creates demand. And when you can have a use case or when you have a, a use case of people who can model and people who can vouch for you at a barbecue, hey, success is inevitable. So every interaction with an audience obviously costs money. However, if it's done willingly and voluntarily without you having had anything to do with it from your ambassadors, guess what? It lessens your marketing budget. And if you can prove that the value of what you sell personally, um, you know, you, you, you are getting results from it, you actually start feeling confident and making really bold claims and guarantees because you know what? You know your stuff works. And the confidence that you have is then passed on to the people that are making purchases because selling is just exchange of confidence and exchange of value all right and people get to trust you a whole lot more because they can actually see the work in action so before you know it they lined up outside your door and in reference to that uh, basket we mentioned at the start of the podcast you know they're forming a crowd around there and others begin to see what you're selling and those that have been there before will be telling the new people hey this guy is really good at what he does so make it a goal to not need a bigger marketing budget by the time you have money but Make sure that your work is preceding you or your reputation precedes you. And once you in the whole scheme of things, be the wise one, not the fool. Because wise people are always aware of what they don't know. All right. Wise people are always seeking solutions on, uh, on top of whatever success they might have and make zero assumptions. So think about your marketing actions that you probably invested time and money in. What's working and what's not? All right. Admit what you don't know and compensate for your weak spots because we can't all be good at certain things. You know, work from facts and not from opinions or things that because if you have spent a long time making a mistake, that doesn't make it right. OK, because when you lose money making mistakes, you're not helping anyone and neither are you helping the people that you think you're going to be helping in the future. Also, think about how you can actually maybe scale back um, and, and, and how you can actually have other people do some of the work so that you leave your hands free to do work that matters. You can't climb the ladder of success with your hands full. So this includes, you know, spending wisely on whatever subscription softwares that you might have instead of maybe jumping onto expensive tools just because you've been using them before, you know? At the end of the day, you know, I've had clients who are paying thousands and thousands of dollars on tools that no longer work or on team members that can be replaced by software, all right? So when you consider how to build a better process, create more streamlined systems that can help you save hours, um, you know, in, in your week. 
and see how many templates that you can put together and how you can automate your work. And one of the things that um, a lot of consultants can actually gain from is creating strategic partnerships. Right? I want you to get create, you know, creative and be decisive on what options you have because you're here to make a difference. All right. And if we're working together, I really want to show you how to get high ticket clients on autopilot using our online prosperity method. And I don't want you to be falling into the traps of working hard and not gaining or getting any results for whatever you're doing. All right. So whatever link that brought you to this website, just reach out and uh, schedule a call um, with me. I viscerally want you to build a business that's uh, profitable and enjoyable. And, and even if you can't do that, just come and see the success that we're getting for other uh, coaches, consultants, um, you know, that we're working with. Because if you still think getting clients is hard, then maybe you're doing something wrong. Repeat this podcast again and figure out what it is that you're not actually doing. Because I know that whatever stuff that you have been, or whatever methods you've been using are the ones that are actually... Uh, limiting your success. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll probably see you or uh, speak to you soon when you schedule a call or listen to our podcast again tomorrow. And don't forget to subscribe because you see the content that we're putting out there every single day is designed to help you build a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the Live Long Digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.